This will be the People News. One more time, not an attorney, not giving legal advice. Educational purposes only. Okay? Never look straight forward. Always look around you. Be able to protect yourself by any means necessary. And how do you do that? Use your Second Amendment. Arm yourself with knowledge. Okay? That being fair and truthful to y'all, just because you know what to do doesn't mean the criminals won't attack you. <laughs> And speaking of criminals, I got a video here for you. <laughs> All right, so this kind of hits me at home, y'all. Uh, some of you guys, new ones, don't know this, but you know, I am raising my blind grandbaby, which is um, almost six years old now, of this month. Okay, and uh, he was actually sent home to pass away. He wasn't supposed to live. Okay. And uh, he had all kinds of beginning issues and all that. But as everything's been taken care of and getting him in a stable position to thrive, his memory is intact. And I'm just so jealous of his memory. <laughs> I mean, researching law, I had to go back and uh, restudy things to kind of give myself a refresher. Uh, his memory's not that way. He retains good things really really good but since he's blind by the way this youtube channel is blind justice and they've been fighting the courts for a good three years i believe and usually i stay on top of it a while back but i've been so busy this and this and this and this right my grandbaby's six years old imagine how much time that takes <laughs> And I'm also raising another one. It's one years old. So that one kind of, uh, you know, uh, it's also, you know, been a baby, <laughs> been a one year old, uh, wanting to get into everything. So uh, this being said, due to me having a blind grandbaby and uh, blind justice is blind and a vet and then all this and judges agreeing to the terms and then denying the terms and uh it's i don't have a whole lot of faith in the judicial branch but there are just certain judges that's just so out of control um i don't even know what to say about it it's just totally disregard of people at all accounts and it's one of them. Let's uh, proceed forward and find out what the hell they're talking about, okay? An email appears on the screen showing email correspondence from Judge Albright. Sections are highlighted showing Mike's request and the judge's response. Mike. <clears throat> Documents sent via email in OCR compatible format. Due to my visual impairment, I can't read printed materials. I can read electronic materials in OCR compatible formats with my electronic devices. Judge Albright. Allowed. Other highlighted text reads, Mike, no threats, intimidation, and coercion. I have PTSD and threats, coercion, and intimidation can cause me to shut down and not be able to function and communicate. Judge, allowed as required in all cases. Mike, a visual interpreter to interpret and relay all visual information at trial. I am visually impaired and unable to have live access to visual information without an interpreter. Judge, all... Speaking of which, uh, just a second ago, right? Uh, as all cases, right? Uh, what's the main George, uh, part of the judges anymore nowadays? They intimidate people, period. They, the people in the black robes are thinking they are gods. They don't even think they're kings anymore. They think they are gods. And you must bow down to them. You must rise. You must sit. I demand you little peons to respect this robe. Right. Denied. After conferring with the administrative office of the courts, there are no certified visual interpreters. However, Mr. Nelson will be allowed to bring any personal assistance of his choosing. See below. Below is Mike. Use of personal assistant as auxiliary aid in the hearing. This person will be able to communicate to the judge when they notice any time my disabilities are making it difficult to communicate. 
Also, with my brain damage, I have memory loss, and my auxiliary aid will be able to remind me of what my defense strategy is. Judge Albright. Allowed. So, Mike clearly explained the role of his chosen auxiliary aid, and by separating the request from the request for a visual interpreter, he made it clear that this aid was not serving in that position. Judge Albright clearly granted the accommodation to send documents to Mike digitally in a format his screen readers could read. The judge also agreed that he would not use threats, coercion, or intimidation during the proceedings. Let's listen to how that actually played out in court. I'm going to give a waiver of counsel to Mr. Simmons. Mr. Simmons, if you'll go over this with your client. Sure, if you give this to Mr. Simmons. Well, excuse me? I'm sorry, Your Honor. You don't have a choice. You're here on his behalf. I'm giving it to you. I'm not. With all due respect, Judge, he's not here on my behalf. He's not He's not representing me. I'm representing myself. He's my auxiliary aide, so he works at my shop. Sure, if that's Mr. Nelson. If that's Mr. Nelson, it's fine. I can't read whatever paper you're handing me, Judge. I can't accept that. That's fine. I'm still giving it to you. And if you could send it to me in an OCR format, because that was one of the accommodations. I'm giving it to you right now. Mr. Nelson, I'm giving it to you right now. I'll take it with Mr. Simmons, and I'll do the best I can to get it to you in another way. Take it, please. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Do you refuse to take that document? We had an agreement, Judge, that you would send documents to me in a certain medical format. And I can't read physical paper. That was what my request was for. All the documents to be sent to me in a certain format. Mr. Simmons, Mr. Simmons, review that document. You're here by order to review that document, Mr. Nelson. Mike reminded the judge of this interaction later in the proceedings when Mike was presenting his arguments in support of his motion to dismiss based on lack of due process. A motion in which the sitting judge, Stuart Albright, was named as one of the chief violators of Mike's rights. Note. Judge Albright did not recuse himself from ruling on whether or not he violated Mike's rights. Federal code on uh, coercion, threats, and intimidation is 42 U.S.C. 12203. It also, in there, uh, explains that it doesn't just pertain to the person with a disability, but any person that is accompanying that person uh, and is assisting them to be able to enjoy uh, equal access. So that, in this case, that extends to my auxiliary aid, auxiliary aid, Mr. Simmons, uh, and the order this morning that the judge when you ordered him to read and be my interpreter, I would say also uh, falls in line with that, that federal code, Judge. All right, Mr. Simmons, did, I, did you feel intimidated or threatened when I asked you to do that? Well, that was an order. In any event, your motion, uh, I know that your stated reasons regarding your assistant with regard to threat and coercion are uh, denied on space and without merit based on what your assistant just told me. He's not been intimidated, I find that as a fact, or threatened or coerced. With regard to your concern and objection to the court, with regard to reasonable accommodations, the court is, your motion is denied, it is meritless. So, again, they've been doing this for a long period of time against him, okay? <clears throat> and as someone that's got a visually impaired grandbaby, in his future, I am concerned a way the judicial branch is operating in. There is technology that can help him proceed forward in the courts be denied uh, certain processes. These are We the People News. Till next time. Bye y'all.